In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> so this incredibly endeavorous and enthusiastic young student had been working on her project, a diorama, and she used every color of Sculpey that the teacher had provided. She colored dry pasta and shells and added buttons and uh, glued some glitter and uh, beads. I mean, this diorama had it all, and she could not be prouder. And the day came for her parents to come in and see the projects that had been made, and her mother and father come in, and she can't wait to show her parents what she made. And as she goes and she picks up her, her diorama, and in, in her enthusiasm, she trips over herself, and it goes crashing to the ground and breaks everywhere. And before it even touched the ground, tears the, the, the size of buckets started falling from her eyes, and her dad would do anything, absolutely anything, to make the tears stop. So he gets down, and he sweeps her up, and he says, it's okay, it's all going to be all right, it's okay, it doesn't matter. And the tears just got louder and richer and fuller until uh, her mom gets down and says, you know what, it's not okay. It does matter matters a lot. You spent so much time on this. This is a moment worthy of grief. Sometimes we try to sweep through it to get the tears out of the way, and we do this with those that we love, our friends, our fellow parishioners. I've been guilty of it as a priest. Someone comes with some death in their life, and instead of getting down into the very trenches, we try to pull them up. It'll be okay. Well, they're in a better place now. Well, I know that's an unfortunate diagnosis, but there's still, still treatments. Often we fail to get down and realize that death has incredible power. The Bible doesn't say death doesn't have power. It says it doesn't have dominion. I think even Jesus struggled with that. I think from several days' uh, journey away, death had much less sting and power than when he got right up into the face of death. I think that's true with us. And I'm not just talking about uh, actual death. I'm talking about all the deaths in our lives, the death of a relationship, a diagnosis that, that, that changes our lives or the way that we anticipate the trajectory of our lives, the deaths of hope we have for our children the deaths of our parents, being able to be the parents uh, that they were before whatever ailment strikes them, the death in our vocations, sometimes the loss of a job, and how quickly do those that are trying their best to help us try to pull us out as fast as they can so that they don't have to deal with the awkwardness and the pain of the grief. Sometimes we think we're doing a favor when we say, come on up. Come on up here where it's a little bit rosier. But really, the way to effective, transformative consolation is through the cross, is through the suffering and death, is through the acknowledgement that it indeed is pretty crummy. When we look at the crummy and we say, you know what, this is broken, then we can offer something real and true and hope-filled. And I don't think Jesus could offer the kind of hope that Jesus can offer without being on the other side of death. But let's start before we get to Jesus, about 600 years before Jesus comes, uh, with a passage from Ezekiel. We know it more from the zem, them bones, them bones, them bones. Uh, but the reading that we have today is a man, a faithful priest, a passionate Israelite looking upon a desolation that we probably haven't ever seen or even envisioned. Take the worst civil war battlefield and magnify it and that's what he's looking at he's looking at the home of, of of where God resided in ruins he's looking at the land promised by God stripped away he's looking at bones and as a priest he's looking at bones that weren't laid to rest uh, according to custom uh, that were defiled and just left out in the roasting sun he is looking at the end of all of their dreams wrapped in this place, in this relationship with God, in this holy promise. He's looking at desolation. Just a sea of what once was 
that isn't anymore. The Babylonian uh, captivity or exile transformed that place and transformed the people therein uh, that weren't uh, imprisoned and taken out but left behind. And so he looks and he sees nothing but desolation. Only when he looks deeply into the desolation can he see something beyond that. Can he close his eyes and see what isn't there, to see a kind of hope that other people couldn't see, that those bones might grow sinew, and then when they grow sinew, they might grow skin, and when they grow skin, that God might be able to breathe breath back into them, and that God might be able to restore God's people, that hope might be born from such desolation and such loss and such emptiness. I think Jesus' story is very similar. First, Jesus hears about it from a couple days away uh, that his beloved friend Lazarus uh, is uh, sick and near death. And he says, you know what? I've got time. Uh, and uh, even if he dies, it's a chance to glorify God. God will be glorified in this. Uh, and, uh, and he waits a couple days and he's talking to his uh, disciples and he's talking about um, uh, the fact that, uh, that he's just asleep. Uh, and the disciples say, remember what happened last time we went there? They're confronting their own death. And Jesus' death. And he said, last time we headed towards Jerusalem, they tried to stone you to death. If we go back there, it could end in death. And so they have to realize, are they filled enough with the Spirit of God, with what really gives life, to risk everything, to live without fear, to journey towards the cross? And Thomas says, if you're going to give your life, we'll go with you. And so they go. I still think Jesus hasn't quite come to grips with what it is to face death. He knows that death holds no dominion, but he doesn't realize how much power death really holds. But that's part of the incarnation, coming in the flesh to realize what it is to be human. And as he gets closer and closer, first he confronts Martha, or Martha confronts him and says, Where were you? This is your friend. We love you. you this is like family, and we thought that you would be here. We thought as soon as you heard word, you would rush and you would save it, but you didn't. You let us down. And how many of us have felt like that? You let us down. You were supposed to make everything all right. And Jesus deals with the sting, and he says, he's still triumphant. He says, I am the resurrection. I am life. And he's true. And he says, it'll be okay. And she says, you know, I know things will eventually be okay. I know we have the promise of eternal life. But right now, I have a dead brother. And I'm suffering, and you weren't there. And he tears at him, and then he gets a little closer, and he gets to Mary. And Mary says the same thing. Where were you? Why did you leave us, abandon us? Why weren't you there to make things well? And then we seize the grief of not just Mary, but all of those uh, brothers and sisters gathered round. He realizes the power that death has on them. And he weeps, and he aches, and he understands the hold that the deaths that we have in our lives have on us. And it's only through that that he can realize the power that he brings. And only through the cross that we can realize the power that a Jesus that walked through death and came out the other side can bring into our own lives. Death does have power. All the little deaths in our lives, all the lostness in our lives, all of the, uh, the confusion in our lives, it has a power. And only when we acknowledge that and we walk through it together, can we come out the other side of the cross and really make Alleluia our song? Really be resurrection people, people who have hope despite whatever life can throw at us. True consolation comes through the cross. So as we journey each step closer to that Holy Week and the other side of Holy Week, remember this. Death does have power, but what sets us apart What's true about the core of our Christian identity is that death doesn't have dominion. Hope does. Hope springs forth from even the most desolate places, even from the stench of death or desolation. We are people of hope, but to get there, we have to walk hand in hand together through the foot of the cross. Amen.